Then in verses 19 through 21, Paul tells us about the works of the flesh. And he says, the works of the flesh are evident. The works of the flesh aren't mysterious. They're not hard to discern. The, the flesh here denotes our, the source from which these evil works come. These works come from the flesh, the sin principle in human beings. The first three vices focus on sexual sin, sexual immorality, and uncleanness, and unrestrained sensuality. The next two terms denote idolatry, idolatry and sorcery. You know, the fundamental sin for Paul is idolatry, right? It's the failure to glorify and praise and honor God and to give him thanks. Uh, sorcery or magic is regularly condemned. What's noticeable about this list is sometimes people think of works of the flesh in terms of physical sins, especially sexual sins, but actually social sins predominate the list here. We have eight different words for social sins. Sins in society, sins in relationships with one another. So we look at these words like enmities and strife and jealousy and bursts of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envies. So there's the emphasis on these sins that disrupt relationships, that plague relationships. And then we have the last two sins mentioned, drunkenness and carousings, which are also mentioned in Romans 13, verse 13, and 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 3. Paul warns the believers of the consequences of practicing the works of the flesh. Here the focus is on the end time kingdom of God, and he says those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So we see that the good we see works the good are work. necessary for final reward. We ought not to misinterpret what Paul does here, right? He, he emphasizes that our salvation is a gift, it's free, it's not based on the law, but Paul is not opening the door here for disobedience. He thinks our lives are changed by God. Those who practice the works of the flesh won't inherit the kingdom. On the other hand, the fruit of the Spirit, that means the, the uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, the fruit of the Spirit is supernatural. It's fruit that comes from the Spirit. Fruit, the Spirit is a genitive of source. But that doesn't mean there's no human participation. We call upon God to help us, don't we? We're not surprised that love is first. We think of 1 Corinthians 13, the preeminence of love in Paul's theology. The last line, against such things there is no law, could mean that no law prohibits the fruit of the Spirit, or perhaps that the law can't produce such godly qualities. But this, or the Spirit produces fruit that the law can't produce.